Fair well, Ryan Sabi is Deputy Political Editor of The Sun. Thank you very much indeed uh, for coming in. Rishi Sunak trying to seize the agenda here. Front page of the Daily Telegraph. PM vows to end sick note culture. He makes a really good point, actually. The number of people who've been left on, on sick notes or fit notes, as they're now called, he points to how much money is being spent on this. And he hopes this will land and land well. Yeah, I think so. It's one of these key subjects where he thinks he has the, the, the initiative maybe over Labour when it comes to the overhaul on, on benefits. And one thing he's very keen on is to reduce the number of people who are on, on, the, on those fit notes. There was 11 million issued last year. He wants to uh, reduce that and actually get more people back into work. One of the key things is actually if people are concerned about their, their health and um, maybe there'll be some things that health specialists can actually do um, so that she can continue work. There may be some little things around the edges that can actually get the people back working again. But that's again. what we'll be looking out for mm. today, isn't it? The detail of this. Who are these specialists? What are their qualifications? How is it going to work if a GP disagrees with their prognosis, for example? Yeah, that, that's one of the, the big questions, and we'll be pushing Rishi Sunak on that uh, when, when he makes that speech this morning. So one of the things is they want to shift away from GPs actually handing out these fit notes and move to these health specialists and other people. But one of the questions, who's going to fund it, where do they come from, what are their qualifications, that's going to, that's going to be a key thing. What you thing. don't want is a one one service, really, mm. do you, where, you know, you've got someone going through a... A checklist. A checklist. And you make a great point. Who's funding it? We're already spending £176 billion on the NHS as it is. I think GPs will welcome this because, yeah. of course, everything is always dumped on the GP, it seems. Yeah, that's right. They've been massively... They're overstretched anyway. You speak to, you know, any, any GP anecdotally and they are... They've, they've, they've got far too much work. They, they, you know, sometimes they can't see all, all their patients and just look after the pandemic mm -hmm. as well. They are, they, are, they are really struggling. And then on, the, on top of that, you've got those NHS waiting lists um, and it's all just clogging up. It's a little bit too much for the mm -hmm. NHS. So if they can take some of the welfare and benefits angle up out of the system, um, it, ho hopefully you'll get more people back mm -hmm. into work, be massive for growth and economic productivity. Uh, you know, it is the front page of The Telegraph, but it's not really going to do very much to distract from from the less palatable headlines for the Tories at the moment, particularly this week with the latest allegations against Mark Menzies. That's right. It's one thing after another for, for the Conservatives. We've had the, the Mark Menzies incident uh, where he claimed that bad people were after him wanted uh, large sums of money from, uh, from political aides. You just had last week, you had Will Ragg, who also uh, relinquished the, uh, the whip after the, the sort of Westminster honey, honey, honey trap plot. Um, so there just seems to be one thing after another. There are, there are absolutely, you know, I think the, the number of independent MPs is now, is now bigger than the Liberal Democrats. Democrats. So it's a real, real problem, not only just for the Conservative Party, but for politics in general. And of course, he resigned the whip, which means uh, they've got, what, 51 majority. There's this big poll as well. Rishi Sunak desperately hoping to cling on. We, as I said, we have the local elections coming up in two weeks' time. And the Ipsos Mori poll for the Evening Standard just is, puts the Tories in a, a sort of des a state of decimation, really. 19%, the lowest since 1978. Yeah, it, it's, it's really bad for them. Uh, how, how do you turn that around if, if that, is, that is replicated? I think one of the telling things will be um, when you come to the local elections in just a couple of weeks' time, you have the local mayoral elections in the West Midlands and the Tees Valley. Now, if they do lose a couple of one of those or both of them, I think it's really uh, it's really terrible for the Conservatives. And you can almost say all bets are off when it comes so, to the so Commons and the MPs. what would happen if they lost one or two? Uh, I, I think it'd be it'd be bad. You just wonder if those those no confidence letters go in because I think it's all bets are off at that stage. Mm. Uh, that Ipsos Mori poll we were talking about also makes pretty grim reading for Keir Starmer on a personal basis in terms of <laughs> his ratings. Yeah, so his ratings down to some minus fifty or, or so. Um, I think I think the trouble for both party leaders it's it's the public seem to have fallen out of love with the Conservatives, but they're not totally in love with Labour. And I think there's this gap in the middle of where lots of people are are sort of politically lost, and you wonder where more parties on, you know, uh, talk about reform or, or the Green Party, do people splinter off to those parties? And that poll sh actually reiterates what you've exactly said, which is about half of them know how they're going to vote, but 47% mm. are really rather lost in terms of how they will vote come an election. Can yeah. I bring in a message we've had from one of our viewers, Jerome, who says, I don't care about the timing of the election. I hope neither main party gets enough votes to make a significant difference. I really don't know what to think. I've totally lost my faith in politicians whatsoever.
and we're hearing that over and over again. Yeah, th right. this is this is the trouble. You've got a, a large you know, swell of people who are politically homeless, and they have mm. been for a long time. Whether they've been disillusioned by the Brexit referendum or conservative, the Conservatives being in power for 14 years, um, they, they need to find somewhere to go. And at the moment, they haven't got anywhere to go. And, and, and of course, the SNP also has problems of its own. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, Peter Nicola Sturgeon's uh, hu husband has been uh, has been charged. Um, that will overshadow the elections this year in Scotland as well. So that's that, that's difficult for them. And we wait to see what um, their leader Hamza Youssef says today. Mm. Ryan, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us.